In Elden Ring, there is nothing more exciting than exploring the lands between and stumbling upon a chest filled with treasure. In an effort to recreate that excitement, I locked the page on my website and told all of you that the first person to guess the password correctly would win $1,000. I hid clues on my channel, in my videos, and even on the website itself. As soon as I announced this, my community went insane and almost immediately people started forming factions, creating conspiracies, making memes, and staying up way past their bedtimes. He has been in this voice chat for 48 hours straight. At the end of this video, not only will you know exactly who the winner was, but you'll also know how they finally managed to solve it. Before we begin, the prize money in this video was sponsored by Dungeon Hunter 6, a free-to-play RPG available on iOS and Android. This game is a lot of fun, and it may be part of the reason why this video was so delayed. Dungeon Hunter 6 is not your average RPG, in fact in this game you play as a bounty hunter who can make bosses serve you after you slay them. You can fly, ride, and summon any boss you manage to kill, adding them to your squad and having them follow you so they'll help you in combat through the use of combos. With over 100 unique bosses, the game also features a customizable mount system where you can ride various creatures and machines as you explore dungeons with your friends. Because this is the sixth iteration of Dungeon Hunter, the game's visuals are better than they've ever been and the combat is extremely smooth. The best thing about this game though is the fact that it's free, so use my link in the description or the QR code on screen to download it today. Doing so will get you a starter pack worth $50 including 10 summoning scrolls, 1 one demonic wolf and one accessory pack. Thanks again to Dungeon Hunter for sponsoring this video. In order to tell this story, we have to go all the way back to May, which is when I launched a video about a speedrun challenge I hosted in Sekiro. In this video, I explained that I was launching a lo-fi stream and a website all on the same day, and that website is where the hunt was being hosted. I spent the better part of three months designing this treasure hunt, carefully placing clues in plain sight for all of you to discover. Each one was meticulously planted in such a way so that every hint flowed seamlessly into the next. And not even an hour into the hunt, people started guessing passwords left and right, with some people even putting together a document to keep track of their guesses. Let's see what they came up with. Oh, my community definitely had their work cut out for them. And as more time went by, each guest got more and more creative, with one person even speculating that the password was the release date of Bloodborne 2. Not quite. Eventually though, they did find the first hint, which was hidden exactly 53 minutes and 30 seconds into my lo-fi stream. Binary code. As it turns out, this stream was actually a looped video about two hours long featuring various lo-fi remixes that I had commissioned. Whenever this binary code did show up, it was always during the remix of Moog's boss theme, and instead of the usual title and author at the top left, two ominous words showed up instead. Lux and Veritas. After translating this binary code, hunters were presented with a URL which led to a hidden page on my website. The hunt was on. With nothing but a saturated image of Inia and a cryptic message, hunters took it upon themselves to follow Inia's advice and save the image. After doing so, they learned that the file itself had a very unique name. And when players brightened the image, they found that there was a hidden code at the bottom of it. It didn't take them long to realize that it was in Coded Base 64, and decoding the message with an online decoder revealed a quote from Inia herself. Who was to say that the cardinal sin, sin must be cardinal forever? At first glance, the message appeared to be simple dialogue from the game, but after taking a closer look, a hunter named Bomble realized that something was off. Four letters were capitalized. Putting these four letters together in the order they appeared made for a new word altogether, HTML, which of course stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Inspecting the HTML of Enya's webpage rewarded users with a hidden link leading to an unlisted video on my YouTube channel. Hello and welcome. Today we'll be taking a closer look at the Dark Wraith using data pulled directly from the game's files to better understand their offensive and defensive capabilities. This was the first video that I have ever created, and after watching it several times over, another hunter named Nie Pokonani noticed something odd. The subtitles were weird. Watching the video with the subtitles on revealed some pretty jumbled text, and that's when a hunter named Virtual discovered that it was an encrypted Caesarean cipher. 
After shifting each of the letters back by three, the jumbled text uncovered the following poem. Amidst the ruins of the lands between were golden beetles, a precious three. They lead the way with focused vision and will reward your foolish ambition. The scarabs shine a radiant glow, their golden bodies a sight to behold. From distant realms they've journeyed far to guide the worthy where secrets are. So heed their call and seek the truth, for in darkness lies eternal youth. What are they pointing to, you ask? Only the brave will complete this task. Being the seasoned Elden Ring players that they were, it didn't take them long to realize that the poem was actually a reference to the scarab beetle shown in some of the shorts on my channel. Nie Pokonani decided to watch and trace each scarab beetle's path, and what was initially thought to be some sort of TikTok attention span sync actually turned out to be a map leading to a central location in Liurnia. When Nie shared this map with the rest of the Discord, people were in disbelief. Around this time, an email went out to every single person who was subscribed to the email list on my website, and this contained dialogue from Moog and Melania along with a button which took them to yet another hidden webpage. This page in particular was completely different from the ones before it, featuring the entire 23-page script of my Sekro challenge video, which is the exact same video that I announced the treasure hunt in. Everything had now come full circle. And at the bottom of the script itself was yet another encoded message along with a single sentence which read, We are all a product of greed, a symbol of avarice. This is where things got difficult, and Hunter spent days reading and rereading the script trying to form some sort of connection. They knew the scared beetles were pointing to something in Liurnia, but they weren't sure where the roads ended. They knew that a treasure chest was involved given the symbol of avarice reference, and they also knew that Mikola, Moog, and Melania were all involved as well. This theory was reinforced a few days later by a two-frame screenshot that was found spliced into the Sekiro video. Creepy. Eventually, there was a breakthrough, and after scouring my channel for references to Mikola, Moog, and Melania, a hunter named Ambush found a link hidden in the timestamps of this video where I beat Elden Ring while playing as Melania. This timestamp was hidden specifically during the fight versus Moog, and after clicking on it, hunters were taken to the third and final hidden webpage on my website. This page in particular had two things on it. The first was a countdown, and the other was a soundbite. Immediately after hearing the soundbite, Hunter Tristan B realized that it was the opening bars to a song called Invading the World of the Guilty, by the band The World is a Beautiful Place and I'm No Longer Afraid to Die. This song was from their album Illusory Walls, and this was not a coincidence, as the members of this band are huge fans of the Dark Souls series. Once this was found, another hunter named Vernie noticed that the name of the soundbite itself also seemed relevant, as 24 by 84 by 28 is the standard size of a coffin. Between all of the unanswered questions, they were completely stumped, and this led them to the code at the bottom of the script. This is currently driving me crazy. I don't think these are words. This has to mean something. I don't get why we can't solve this. It shouldn't be that hard. If you look at this and you compare it to every other hint I've given, this is too obvious. It's just sitting there at the end of the script, perfectly placed, waiting for you to just crack it, right? This is an unsolvable cipher. There is no answer to this. People have spent hours of their life trying to crack this. This is a red herring. It's the reddest of herrings. <laughs> <laughs> Fuzz found it. Fuzz found it. He realized they were using the wrong link to enter the password. The initial page here is not the real page that you need to type the password in. It's actually hidden. It's essentially an illusory wall. The real page was hidden in the script and Fuzz found it. The first line of every paragraph with dialogue that I didn't actually say in the video spelled out the actual link that you need to use to enter the password. I can't believe this. A hunter named Direwolf has put together a 27 page diary recounting his entire experience with the hunt. I finally gave up. I lost it. After nine days, my brain has rotted. They're gonna solve it soon. They're really close. Almost one month into the treasure hunt, a bunch of new members joined the Discord with fresh eyes and open minds. One of those members was a hunter named Pole, who started to question everything. Are there any illusory walls near Moog or in the underground? 
Last wall in the catacombs leads to a dead-end area with a chest. What does this chest have? Guys, somebody finally solved it. I have no idea. I got the email. It just came through. Someone finally guessed it. I'm going to call him. Hey. Hey, Paul. Congratulations. Hey. You figured it out. <laughs> how? Walk me through your process. Like, how did you discover the password? I joined the server late, so I had missed a lot of stuff. I went to check back um, from the roads and catacombs, the illusory walls. I thought yeah, you would try to connect it somehow with your name. And I searched if there were any chests. So there was actually one chest behind the illusory wall, which had indeed the Raya Lucaria soldier ices inside. And that ended up being the password as I, as I tried a lot of words. That when I tried that, it actually solved the riddle. Nice. Great job. Uh, did you have fun, at least? It sounds like a lot of people were dying inside. No, of course I had fun. Like, it was the first time I actually participated in one of these, so it was a unique experience for me. <laughs> awesome. I'll definitely be doing more of these. And <laughs> yeah, congratulations again on, on winning the money. Thank you very much. All right, bye. Bye. In the end, the password was Raya Lucaria Soldier's Ashes, an item that can be found behind an illusory wall in the Roads and Catacombs. If you're curious about my rationality behind this password, these ashes reside in a Dark Souls-inspired Easter egg chest, which is actually one of very few in the entire game. I thought this seemed appropriate considering my channel's namesake, and all of the references to greed, illusory walls, coffins, and the scarab beetles were meant to lead you here to the catacombs. The constant references to Mikola and Melania were all designed to push you towards the real URL, the Empyrean page, as the original page was essentially just an illusory wall, just like the one hiding the password in the catacombs. Special thanks to everyone who attempted the challenge. I know this was really tough at times, but I had a lot of fun watching you all piece everything together. If you want to see me do another one of these in the future, then don't forget to like and share the video because YouTube doesn't always recommend.